Hello guys and welcome to our brand new video. Today I'm here with an FGO 7 analysis video and today I will be reacting to the newest FGO 5 star character Uesugi Kenshin Ruler Servant demonstration and uh, you know her NPC, her skills and uh, her ascension arts just like I usually do. So um, this has obviously been teased from the beginning of this Guda Guda event you know like Uesugi Kenshin as a 5 star character and yeah she's here. So um i'm very much looking forward to this um i have been hearing obviously like we all know nagao kagetora and i've been hearing that she is you know like her ascension arts and everything are very good and uh yeah now that we finally have her let's see let's see what this character is about if she's good or not you know like and uh, how her animation plays out all that stuff um so yeah let us begin then okay so as always all the um, original videos that I'll be reacting to in this reaction video will be provided in the description box and uh, yeah let us get started oh also before I forget uh, obviously just like I usually do I put out a poll on J uh, on on my youtube channel in the community section uh, whether I will be pulling for Uyasugi Kenshin in my JP account or not whichever option will win uh, there's four options 300 600 900 and uh, a skip option Whichever option will will I'll win will um god damn it will win I'm gonna do that um so yeah if skip wins I'll skip her banner if 900 wins I'll pull up until 900 un until I get her you know you know what I do usually so if any of the options win then I'm gonna do that tomorrow so I'm gonna let one uh, it you know let's stay for one day and see how many votes it gathers um so yeah uh, I wanted to mention that. And uh, let's get started then. Okay, so first I will be reacting to her servant demonstration. So, um, yeah, Uyasugi Kenshin ruler servant demonstration. Here we go. Okay, here, we, here she is. Whoa, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I love the way she takes out the sword. That is beautiful. Wait, is she an AoE character? Okay. Okay, okay, these animations are so good. My god. <laughs> I love the sound effects of the Nobus as well. Right. Okay. Oh, wait, she. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about this later. Wait, who does she remind me of? She reminds me of a certain character. Oh, it's from Honkai Impact. I'll talk about that later. She reminds me of a certain character, you know, especially with her thing, the lance thing. Wait, what? Oh, that's like um um a stage only buff, I'm guessing. Stage specific buff. Nice. Okay, okay. Okay, her, her animations are very nice. I love this one especially. Her extra attack is so good. <laughs> what the hell? Right. He's a mile. Oh, my cousin. Oh, okay. This one was good as well. Okay, why is she making cat noises? Can't see he's 
Yo, I have to mention this. Her horse looks so good. Look at the horse. That's a fancy horse. Okay. Oh, and. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay, she's a single target. Okay, I, I made a mistake there. She's a single target, isn't she? AoE? Uh, Noble Phantasm? Yeah, I love this part where she takes out a sword. It is amazing. Yeah, she's single target. Yep, she's single target. Hmm. Wait, what? This is the second ascension? Oh, I guess it kind of makes sense. Because if you remember... Um, okay, what I was saying. It makes sense because one of the other character, um, Takeda Shingen, he also had his second ascension, like a casual dress. If you remember? Yeah. Okay, so his <laughs> her horse changes into a motorbike, <laughs> just like um, Takeda Shingen's. Um, oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> He's a mile. <laughs> Okay, I do wonder why is she making cat noises. <laughs> yeah, even though I like the motorbike, her horse was amazing. I loved like you know like the design of that horse. The horse looked so cool. Oh boy. Hopefully the horse comes back. Uh, comes back in the third ascension. Let's see. <laughs> Wait, what the hell? Yo! Okay! I'm guessing that's another stage specific buff. <laughs> what the hell was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Beaten <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, wow, that was really cool. That's skill animation. Interesting, so her skill animation also changes along with the uh, um, ascension as now Yeah, that does happen, but this is the I think like the 
second ascension arc for the first time, I think. Because you know, usually the second ascension is the same, but nowadays I'm seeing that they're changing small stuff. Like for example here, the horse changes into a motorbike in the second ascension. Same with Takeda Shingen as well. So... And the skill animation also changed. Okay. <laughs> right, third ascension, this should be good. Oh, okay. So she gets like a sword from here. Alright. Okay, here we go. This should be good. Usually, third ascension animations are better. Okay. Oh, alright. Oh my god, yo! Damn! Okay, that one was the best for now at least. That that single animation. Oh that was a that was the extra extra attack animation, okay. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god he's, he's just using like beams and everything Right. いいですね。はい。参りましょう。Oh my god. Uh. Uh. Oh wait, that was you? Okay. <laughs> right, here we go. Okay, she brings back the uh the 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 thing. What, what do you call it? Hmm. うん。白抜きます。参りましょう。いいですね。ふう。人の世のことはり。Okay, so one thing. Since she's a single target arts ruler. Is there any other single target arts ruler? Five star? I'm trying to think. Okay, that was good. I'm trying to think if there's any other single target 
five star ruler character because whenever I need a single target arts ruler I usually use Astraea you know alongside Castoria Astraea hits very hard um so I'm trying to think if there's any five star single target arts ruler I cannot remember okay all right let's listen to our summoning lines Hmm. Okay. これより恩見を守護し、あの道に立ちはだかることごとく落ち滅ぼしましょう。はい。次に最強無敵、英語腐敗の完全形態へと位を上げた、影虎ちゃん改め。影虎ちゃん。剣心ちゃんをよろしく
don't remember. I don't remember. Um, anyways, um, but I don't think there is. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, is there anyone else? Eo. Eo is a four star, so I'm not going to include her. Uh, Aries. Who else? No, I don't think there is. Is there? James Moriarty. He's his Buster, isn't he? I think he's Buster. No, he's. Oh wait, Moriarty is Arts. Oh wait. So. No, all enemies. That means AOE. No, I don't think there is. Let me know if I'm missing, if I'm if I'm forgetting someone. Uh, if she is the first five star single target uh, arts character ruler, then like I said, you know, I I don't have like a five star uh, like you know single target arts ruler. So I in NA I use Astraea, you know, in, in when I need certain like a you know, character like her. So if someday I get her in JP, like you know, that'll be kind of good. Uh, sorry, if someday I get her in NA, that'll be kind of good because I'll be able to get like a single target um, arts ruler. That'll be quite good. Um, but yeah, so all right, that was uh, Uesugi Kenshin. Now we got to see her uh, attacks, her demonstration. Um, yeah, both of the <coughs> animations were <coughs> really good. Um, and yeah, you can see like, you know what? Her first ascension and the second ascension skills, uh, I was saying this, reminded me of a certain character from another game. You know, she has the whole, um, I don't know what to call that, like this big lance kind of thing she has, which she uses. Um, that reminded me, like her fighting style especially, where she was like, you know, using it to shoot beams and like just kind of like, you know, like kind of like piercing it into the enemy and then like blasting it like this, you know, like, like a blast. She was using it to blast the enemy that way and then there was another section i remember where she throws the thing no where she uh, shoots a beam through it and the beam falls and it explodes you know these reminded me of another character from another game which is honkai impact there's a character called durandal over there and uh, she has like a like the similar lance type of thing and she uses it to literally shoot like she uses the lance to literally shoot beams through it kind of beams like explosion mini beams that kind of thing <laughs> So I, I was like, oh, I feel like I've seen her fighting style somewhere before and then clicked clock in my head. I was like, oh, it's from Honkai Impact. Yeah, you know, there's another character who has a similar fighting style to her. And uh, <laughs> that really reminded me of that. Also, um, like I said, her, her animations were really good. And I feel like both her animations, both the first and the third ascension animations, both were good in its own way. Usually I prefer the third ascension animations, but again, for this character, you know, I kind of prefer both, you know, like it's not like one I prefer more than the other. The first one has its own charms, like I said, it, she, he had in, in her first ascension. The fact that in her extra attack, the horse comes, that I really liked, you know, and, uh, and her horse looks so good, man. Her, her horse, like, you know, with like, I don't like, horse's design was really cool. I really liked her horse's design. Also, um, you know, like it had its own really good parts as well. Like I said, the extra attack, I, I loved extremely. Um, then also like in a few of the other attacks where she was using her lance to go and like, you know, like it, it was good. And the third ascension, then the third ascension comes where her whole fighting style changes completely. She uses the, I don't know what those are, those things in the back to attack. And again, the uh, extra attack for the third ascension was also really good. You know, it was also very good in its own way. You know, the first ascension extra attack I liked because of the horse and the way they it played out. This one as well I liked because of the way it played out, the way they made it, like you know, like the uh, animation. So that is why I'm saying each has its own charm, and usually I kind of prefer one set of animations to another. Not this one though. I like both of them. You could say equally. However, the third ascension, ascension art, I prefer a lot more than the first and the second ascension art. And just because of that, if someday I get her in NA, B, in JP, um, I'll probably keep it in the third ascension because the third ascensions and uh, ascension art, I, I really like the ascension art. 
and the noble phantasm now oh it was really good especially that part was so smooth where she takes out the sword like this that part was probably my most favorite like in a section the way she smoothly takes out the sword like you know like oh boy that was really good like you know like i, I really love characters taking out swords from their sheets or putting it back in it, it i don't know why but it looks so cool to me <laughs> the way they do that you know and uh, yeah you know that that part was smooth she 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 gets the sword like this and like takes it out oh that was good and uh, yeah so there you go overall um yeah very good i like you know like the characters demonstration and the ascension arts and all that stuff noble phantasm as well so yeah great character now i'm going to kind of search a little bit about her usually i do this kind of go to the wikipedia article uh so i'm just going to do that uh uesugi kenshin i kind of know about obviously i do know about uesugi kenshin but you know just you know a little bit more let me like check all right um Nagao Kagetora, there you go. Later known as Ueshugi uh, Kenshin, the Japanese daimyo, he was born in Nagao clan and after adoption into the Ueshugi clan, ruled Echigo province. Oh, she got adopted to the Ueshugi clan. Ah, I see. Oh, that is why her name is Nagao Kagetora. Oh, I thought, okay, I didn't know this. I Up until now, I thought her whole name change is also kind of like um, Ushiwaka's. Like, how, you know how Ushiwaka's name is like Ushibakamaru when she was a uh, uh, when not she sorry god damn FG was e <laughs> messing with my head he um when Ushibakamaru was small he was called Ushibakamaru and then when he grows older uh, she becomes uh, Minamoto no y Yorimitsu I think yeah Minamoto no Yorimitsu isn't she isn't that his name I think so all these names like uh, I'm, I'm I'm wait you know what Minamoto no Yorimitsu. Minamoto no Yorimitsu. Okay, let me check. Ushi is this Ushiwa? Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Oh my god. I made a mistake. Wait a minute. Ushiwaka Maru. I, I knew, I, I thought like maybe I'm making a mistake. No, Ushiwakamo is Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Oh god. Oh god, I mixed stuff up again. <laughs> Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Wait, then who's Minamoto no Yorimitsu? Oh, it's Ra Oh, Minamoto no Yorimitsu is Raiko, isn't it? Wait a minute. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> yep, uh, yeah, I made a mistake. I mixed those two names up. You know, this is why, you know, like, their names are so similar, I always mix it up. Minamoto no Yorimitsu is, um, Raiko, and Minamoto no Yoshitsune, yeah, is Ushiwaka. Okay, yeah, I went on a tangent. So, I thought up until now that just like how Ushiwaka had a, like, you know, like a, uh, when she, he was a child, his name was Ushiwaka Maru, and then when he grew up, that is her, her name, his, god damn it, his name uh, became uh, Minamoto no Yoshitsune. I thought it was similar to that here. I thought that Naga Kagetora was his, uh, like, you know, when she was a kid, he was a kid. That was the name. And then it changes. No, so it's a little bit different. Um, since he was born in the Nagao clan, he, his name was Naga Kagetora. And after adoption to the USV clan, he became Uesugi Kenshin of the Echigo province. I see. Okay. Because this is the thing, I remember that in, back in the days, um, you know, especially in, in, in Japanese, like, you know, like, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of people say that every, like, you know, like, like a lot of the characters, not characters, a lot of the people, they had like a name which they had when they were a kid. And then when they grow up, they change their name or the, the name changes. I also remember, where was it? I don't remember, but, um, there was something where I heard that when some Kids, when kids are small, they give them like a bad name so that, you know, like after they grow up, they change it and like, like something like, oh, that was Golden Kamui. That was in the Ainu culture. Yeah, that was in the Ainu culture. In the Ainu culture, as far as I can remember, they explained how all the kids have like, like weird names, like, like a, a character in Golden Kamui literally had the name of Poop. And uh, like another had the like you know like weird names they give because 
you know, like they, when they grow up, they change it and they some, some, something like that they said. You know, like they, they, they leave behind that part of them and they be, grow up and that is why they change their name. That kind of thing. And uh, they, give, they, they deliberately give them bad names so that, you know, like, like those things can be taken. Like something like that, I remember. Um, so, yeah, so children, they had a certain name and, and, and they change it when they grow up. I thought that, that was similar here as well. No, Uesugi Kenshin's the whole thing is different. It was adopted. Okay, anyways, um, uh, all right. Known as the Dragon of Echigo, while chiefly remembered for the prowess on the battlefield as a military genius, Kenshin is also regarded as an extremely skillful administrator, fostered with the growth of local industries, trade, and his law, uh, and his rule saw market rise of standard living. Okay. Uh, many of his followers and others believed him to be the avatar of Bisha Mountain. There you go. And called Kenshin the god of war. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That is USC Kenshin. Right. So yeah, that was Uesugi Kenshin and I did know about him, but I just, you know, had to make, I had to check it a little bit more. Uh, okay, so there you go. Now that was my reaction to the demonstration and my impressions on it. Now I'm going to look at her um, ascension arts. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so <clears throat> the first one. Okay, wait a minute. All right. So the first one is this one. Okay, so this one, um, it's, I feel like this is very similar to her, um, the welfare, like, you know, Uesugi, uh, Naro Kagetora, that, that, like, you know, appearance is very similar to that. Um, she has her, like, you know, like her hair, the white and the black hair, and she has her armor. Yeah, this is, this is kind of very similar to that, to the four star uh, Naro Kagetora. And she has her sword. I'm not even sure if that's her sword. It's like a sword kind of thing. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, nothing else to say. Like I said, this this ascension art, it's it's very similar to the Nagao Kagetora four star form. And uh, yeah, and he he she is star like you know the background is like a cherry blossom. I think that is the cherry blossom tree behind her and. Uh, they bought some petals all over the place. So yeah, okay. This one, I like it, you know, like obviously, but you know, I prefer the other two a bit more than this one. It's probably because I've, I've kind of seen this form a lot in her, um, in her four star form. So maybe that is why, you know, like, I like it, but not that much. All right, this is the second um, ascension. Now, here you can see, this is the, I guess you could say the modern, like, you know, like the dress that she's wearing. I do remember in uh, Shingen's, like, you know, like Takeda Shingen's uh, Ascension Arts, he also had, like, it was a second Ascension, wasn't it? Where he had, like, a dress where there was, like, a dragon and everything, like, you know, all of, like, it was, like, a, like a modern, like, you know, dress kind of thing. And it's similar to that, even in her Ascension uh, demonstrations, you know, just like how um, Shing Takeda Shingen's, um, horse changes into a car, same happens here as well. Her horse changes into a motorbike. <laughs> and uh, the motorbike is cool, but I, ha I, I pr kind of prefer the horse a bit more, you know, the horse looks so cool. Um, but yeah, anyways, and this ascension art, I, yeah. another thing, this ascension art reminds me of a certain ascension art of another certain character that I cannot remember. Is it Okta Soji? You know, Okta Soji, the swimsuit version? I feel like I've seen this style of as ascension art. I think it is Okta Soji, Okta J Soji, you know, Jetpack Soji or whatever her name is. Um, as far as I can remember, she or someone else has a similar ascension to this, you know, with the whole, um, you know, like this, this type of style, I think. I don't remember if it's Okta or it's someone else, but it is someone. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, this is like a more modern, like, you know, like fashion, like, you know, like fashionable kind of dress that she's wearing. <laughs> and uh, she, I like the, the color scheme, you know, like the, the fluorescent green color, uh, the fluorescent green and the black color. Uh, it, it matches with her, like, you know, eyes and her white and black hairstyle as well. And 
Damn, her, is that her hair? Good God, her hair is like <laughs> so long and it's like kind of like, you know, like, like fuzzy. It's kind of fuzzy, you know, more. <laughs> yeah, it looks more like a tail than like a hair, you know, like those fluffy tails. It kind of looks like that. Oh, another thing. Is, is this like a, I don't know, like a, like a lore related thing? Why is she making cat noises? Like she's like, <laughs> constant, constantly making nya nya, you know, like nya nya, like noises, whenever she's fighting and everything. It's probably something related to the story. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. This one's this one's good. However, the next one, which is this one, ah, uh, this is the one that I like the most. Um, here, as she says in her ascension lines. This is like the Bishamonten like part of her and it's like so she's kind of like Bazette I'm guessing you know just like how Bazette has a first and the second ascension like you know the normal Bazette and then in the third ascension she changes into like the goddess I, I don't remember her name I've forgotten her name but she becomes like that goddess thing. I guess um, Kunaska of Light is also kind of like that. The first and the second ascension is like, uh, you know, like the normal version, then the third ascension is like... So, <clears throat> basically that happens. And uh, yeah, this was very cool. I don't know what it is that those things are behind her. It do looks cool though, but I'm not really sure what those are. Um, also, her flaming sword is really cool. Her dress is very cool. Um, her black, white, red um color like you know like the scheme it's also really cool it's 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 very cool her, her this ascension is very nice and i can see that she's like her <laughs> her shoes are like she has very high heels i think that's that's a heel isn't it wait a minute let me check yeah that's a heel isn't it? that's a long shoe <laughs> yeah but this is the best one yeah obviously this is the best one so uh, there you go. And then we have this one, the final ascension art. And uh, you can properly see her like in a, you know, like a, in a, in a side, you know, like a side way. And uh, yeah, she's just there. Posing, you know, like nothing else. Like what, what can I, like it, it's, it's the same ascension, but you know, she's, she's striking a pose. So there you go. Um, yeah. That was the Ascension Arts. And uh, like I said, I really like the, all the Ascension Arts, obviously. Third one is the one that I like the most. And uh, then probably the second and then the first. <clears throat> so yeah, that was basically Kenshin's Ascension, uh, Ascension Arts. Now, I will be looking at her um, skills. <coughs> okay, just a minute. Right. So, her skills. Her first skill, okay, see, she is um, a quick arts arts buster buster, you know, like, and she is like a, a arts single target ruler, yeah? Right, the first skill. Fate decreed by the heavens, armor strengthened by heart, glory gained on foot, A. Wow, that's a long skill name. Um, increases critical strength for self. 20 to 30 percent three turn okay increase star absorption to self 300 to 500 percent three turn okay applies evade to self two times three turns oh wait so excuse me <clears throat> increases critical strength star absorption evade okay so all right so so it's like an offensive and a support skill, I guess you could say, because critical strength is increasing the damage you deal. Uh, increasing star absorption helps in using the crits and also applying evade two times three turns. So it's it will stay for three turns and it will evade two attacks. Okay. All right, a good skill. The second skill is white flame A. Increases art scar effectiveness to self by 20 to 30% three turns. Increases NP gods for self. 30 to 50 percent okay and gain critical stars per turn 5 to 15 ah three turns right another offensive skill increases arts effectiveness increases np gods which kind of helps in support i'm guessing as well 50 percent 
and critical stars per turn. So this skill gives critical st stars. The other skill, the first skill also gives critical stars. Um, wait, so, oh, wait, 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 wait. 5 to 15. So you're getting 15 critical stars for three turns. That's quite good, isn't it? I think so. That's like very good. Like imagine every turn for three turns, you're getting 15 critical stars. Oh, that's really good. Also, wait a minute, the first one, increase star absorption self for three turns. So, okay, you know what? These two skills really complement each other. Now, obviously the first skill also gives you a little bit of, uh, you know, like a critical damage as well, which also helps. But, you know, since you, if you use the second skill, it's going to give you 15 critical start per turn automatically. And all these three turns, if you pop the first skill along with it, it'll absorb the stars to your card. So you're going to get a bigger chance of using crit hits. I see. Okay, these two complement each other very nicely. You know, just pop these two at the same time. You have to pop these two at the same time. Otherwise, I guess it wouldn't... Uh, no, wait, wait a minute. Should I pop these two? Wait, so the first one... Um, 15 per turn... Gain critical star. Yeah, so you have to pop these at the same time. Both of them will persist for three turns. So wait, I, I cannot remember one thing. If you use this the second skill, will it give you the critical stars immediately or will it wait for the next turn to give it to you? That's what I'm trying to think. If that's what happens, if the latter happens, like you use the second skill and in the next turn you're going to get 15 critical stars, then you'll have to wait. You have to wait one turn before using the skill one. You know, like, because that's what, it, it, that would make sense. If the second skill, if you pop it, if you get immediately the 15 critical star, then you have to pop both the skills at the same time. Both will persist for three turns. But I cannot remember, like I'm saying, I cannot remember if uh, gaining critical stars per turn, if it happens in the next turn. As far as I can remember, it happens next turn, doesn't it? Like if you pop it now, next turn you're going to get 15 critical stars. So if that is the case, you have to pop the second skill first, wait for one turn, and then use the first skill. That will work a little bit better. You can persist, uh, yeah, that will work a little bit better, I think. Yeah. Okay. Now, the third skill, Bishamontan's Pagoda C, applies 200% overcharge to a single ally. Oh. One time, three turns. Increase criticals, uh, increase attack for a single ally, 10 to 20%, three turn. Increase NP gain for a single ally, 20 to 30%, three turn. Right. <clears throat> okay. So it gives like overcharge 200%. Attack increases and NP gain increases. Mm. Right. Okay. So yeah, all, I guess all three complements each other because the, the final one, since it gives you NP gain, the more you crit and more you use like, you know, like hit the other character, uh, with the extra NP gain, it'll help you gain more um, critical stars. Uh, sorry, get more um, NP, NP charge. So, yeah, and this also gives you a little bit of extra attack as well, 20% attack. Um, the overcharge is good, obviously, for the Noble Phantasm. Hmm. Okay. Right, you know what? I like the skills. The skills are pretty good. Um, okay, one thing I'm trying to see here. Uh, how much hits? Wait a minute. I cannot find it, but how many hits do the cards... Oh, five. Oh, Buster cards hits five times, Arts cards hit four times, Quick cards hits four times, and Extra card hits five times. Right. So quite good. The extra gain, like an you know, NP gain is going to help you a lot. Um, yeah, it's going to help you a lot. The 30% extra NP gain, and if you, like every single card hit, you're getting at least four or five hits. And if you crit on top of that, yeah, okay, so you can gain critical, uh, you can gain NP charge quite quickly. Okay. All right. So yeah, all these three skills are very good. I, I like it. They, they really complement each other nicely. And uh, yeah. All right. Now, the Noble Phantasm is called 
Um, oh wait, before that, uh, her cooldowns, uh, max cooldown 8 and minimum cooldown is 6. Um, her passives, magic resistance B increases on debuff resistance by 17.5%. Riding skill A increases on quick card effectiveness by 10 turns, at uh, 10%. Um, Divinity A applies 200 damage plus to self, okay. Treasure in the heart B increases on buff removal resistance by 10% and death resistance by 10%. There you go. Right. Now, Noble Phantasm. Bishamontan's eight aspects, unknown fire. Okay, increases art card effectiveness for self. Overcharge 20 to 40 percent for one turn. Okay, uh, okay, so it increases art card effectiveness. Um, and remove buffs from a single enemy. Oh, and deals damage to a single enemy. Noble Phantasm, some, uh, 900 to 1500 percent. Also, it is 150 percent super effective damage to a single human attribute enemy. Hmm. Okay, wait a minute. You know what? Let me go to just a sec. Okay, apply arts up uh, on self for one turn. Okay, yeah, so this is the overcharge effect, which is uh arts card up so you know since the third skill has like literally gives you 200 percent uh overcharge you know you can easily you know like use this like an you know, extra arts card like every time you use a noble phantasm uh not every time but uh if you use the third skill before that and if you're able you can overcharge it by you know 200 percent and uh yeah you're going to get that extra damage extra arts card damage um also oh okay so deal damage with super effective damage of 150 percent against attribute humans to one enemy oh so if the enemy is has the attribute of human hmm so you're going to deal them even extra damage i see okay all right okay there you go so yeah seems she seems quite okay you know like she she seems quite good um like i said every single uh, skill uh, complements each other um the first one like increases the critical strength which is obviously very important because she's literally like a crit based character um star absorption it gives you for three turns also applies an evade to you just so that you can survive um so the main thing here is critical strength and star absorption because this will help in the second skill where the second skill, skill gives you arts effectiveness, increases NP gods by 50% and it gives you gain critical stars per turn for, uh, by 15 for 3 turns. That's why the first one is very important to this one because using this one and the first one you can gain extra critical stars and you can deal extra critical damage to the enemy. Uh, because also the first skill gives you a 30% increase critical damage. So these two are very important. You need to use them properly uh, Calculating how like if, what, what you need to do is you need to uh, Make sure that the gain critical stars per turn is actually it coincides with the uh, Increased star absorption Both must must go inside. You'll be able to deal the maximum damage like that um, That's these two and the third one, it gives the overcharge. This one is kind of, you have to use this one along with the Noble Phantasm because this gives you overcharge, which helps in the Noble Phantasm, dealing a little bit extra arts damage. Um, and it also increases a little bit of attack, 20% attack and uh, NP gain as well, which is going to help you gain those extra NP so that you can use the Noble Phantasm. So there you go. The first and the second skill are kind of with like, you know, like a set. Both are supposed to be used almost at the same time. You need to use one based on the other. While the third skill and the Noble Phantasm are a set. You're supposed to use these two, uh, you know, like one alongside the other, calculating, like one depends on when you will do the other one. So the skill one, skill two is a set. Skill three and the Noble Phantasm is a set. And, you know, like you need to like, like that, you can deal quite a lot of damage with her, I can see. So there you go. Um, yeah, again, I don't think she's a broken character or anything, you know, but she seems really good. She seems really good as a single target arts ruler character.
Um, like I said, I cannot really remember if there's any other five star ruler arts character. I don't think there is, uh, you know, um, and so if there isn't any single target five star arts ruler character, then I'm guessing all the people in the JP must be using Astria up until now, you know, for these type of situations because Astria is really good. You know, I, I have her and she's really good as a single target. So now I'm guessing everyone is going to switch from her to this. Everyone who will get her. <coughs> so there you go. Anyways, um, that was my um, servant analysis for Whiskey Kenshin. Uh, great character, great uh, ascension arts, great skills, um, great demonstration. You know, like her noble phantasm also very cool. Overall, a solid character. So there you go. Uh, uh, so that is it. Thanks for watching. Now, okay, um, before I end this, just like I say every time, whether I'll be getting her for NA when she comes two years later, it'll depend on the Christmas characters. <laughs> a little bit more we'll have to wait because we do know we're getting a Christmas character. And then the New Year as well. Wait, wait, um, wait, the Christmas and the New Year, do they do that separately? Or is there like a... I cannot remember. It's separate, isn't it? Yeah, the Christmas and the New Year servants are separate, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if that's the case, then this we have to wait a little bit more. First of all, we have to wait for the Christmas and then for the New Year's to properly understand whether we will we can spend enough on her when she comes to NA. Like I said, New Year and um, Christmas, crazy things can happen. <laughs> Who knows who they'll bring? So it'll all depend on that. I cannot really say now, you know, let me wait and see and what characters we get. Then maybe I'll get her when she comes in NA. But if there's some crazy characters coming out in New Year and uh, Christmas, probably not. I'll save. I'll just save for the next one. But overall, she looks really good. She's, she's a great character. And uh, yeah, uh, for JP though, like I said, I did my poll, uh, whichever option is going to win. I'm going to do that in my JP account and uh, yeah let's see how that goes so that is it guys thank you for watching this was my reaction to usui kenshin so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out and uh, yeah so that is it um thanks for watching i will see you guys in the next video uh more fgo videos are going to come out uh i know that the i think in na the christmas event is going to start soon so i'll do that you know, and uh, I'm guessing after the Christmas, we're getting Tunguska Sanctuary. We'll have to do that as well. Like, you know, like a lot of things coming up. Um, and then obviously in JP, Christmas is coming, New Year's. This will be packed. You know, this year, uh, month will be packed with a lot of FGO, I think. So, yeah, let's, you know, go step by step. So that is it. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.